All right, so we know that the job market when it comes to programming is getting tougher by the day. Over the past 12 months, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people lose their jobs. That means if you wanna succeed as a programmer, you need an unfair advantage. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you 11 skill sets that'll help you set yourself apart from other programmers. If you saw my last video in terms of getting ready for 2024, these are areas I think you should focus on. Now, the first one is actually really unfair. It's the ability to know multiple programming languages. And it's unfair because this really leans towards those who have been in the industry for a significant amount of time. But the thing is, you really don't need to be a master in all the languages that you know. What you have to do is be able to understand how to program, how to think like a programmer. And if you understand general programming concepts like loops, functions, objects, classes, variables and conditionals, then you're pretty much going to be able to transfer that or translate that into another language. And this will actually make you a stronger programmer because if you can understand the syntax of Python, of JavaScript, of PHP, maybe you start getting into Rust or some other programming language, you're gonna find that your projects get a lot easier. And the benefit of knowing more than one programming language is the fact that you'll be more useful on your team. And when a project manager or when a boss is looking to see who's gonna stay on, they're probably gonna choose the person that has more than one programming language under their belt. Now, am I saying that you should become a full stack developer? Well, that might be helpful, but the reality is you don't need to be a full stack. Again, you have to learn how to think like a programmer. Learn the fundamentals of programming. Learn the various concepts. Then identify two or three languages and try to create similar projects with those languages. And the beauty is a lot of tools today like GitHub Copilot can help you in terms of converting code from one language to another. Number two, getting a deep understanding of data structures and algorithms. Now, data structures and algorithms is something that people talk about a lot, but you're gonna find that people don't spend that much time on it. And the reason is, it's really hard. But there's a significant benefit of knowing how these data structures and algorithms work. Not because you're gonna always use them, but because they help you to understand programming at a significantly deeper level. You'll get a better understanding of how to structure your code. And when it comes to technical interviews at top tech companies, knowing DSA or data structures and algorithms is really important. Number three, cloud computing. Now cloud computing has been on the scene for a very long time at this point. And we have a few major players from AWS to Azure and Google. But the reason why learning about cloud computing is so important is because it comes down to scalability. Not many companies are really keeping their own servers in-house anymore. Most companies are using a cloud service provider, which means they require people that know how to interact with those systems. So definitely take some time and go to AWS or go to Google or Azure and see what they have in terms of certifications or courses or training methods to learn how to best utilize their systems. But beyond that, you also want to learn about Linux because at the end of the day, a lot of the data we work with, a lot of the programs we work with, all run on Linux. Yeah, as consumers, we might be Windows or Mac OS users. But when it comes to small businesses, when it comes to medium-sized businesses and Fortune 500 companies, when it comes to the cloud, when it comes to artificial intelligence, when it comes to all these data centers that exist, Linux is the primary operating system used on all of them. So you're gonna wanna learn how to use the Linux command line, knowing how to SSH into a system, understanding how to use bash automation in order to get complex things done, and really understanding how Linux as a platform works in terms of users and groups and file systems, ownership of directories and files, and how to manage your project and your platform on Linux, and really in the cloud as well. Number four, mastery of version control. Using something like Git is a game changer and really should be required by all developers nowadays. And I'm not just referencing GitHub or GitLab or any of these other platforms. What I mean is actual Git. Learn the fundamentals of how to manage a project under version control. And I did another video and I have a couple of videos on Git on this channel. But ultimately what you wanna do is get a good understanding of how to do th different things like branching your projects. When you have a new idea, if you wanna test out a new feature, a new piece of functionality, you can create a test branch. You can play around with the code and you can see if it works or if it achieves the goal that you're trying to do. And then if it does work, you can merge it into your main project. And Git is really good when you're working on a team, especially if you know how to use Git Blame. It'll help you and your teammates have a more smooth development process when it comes to managing your code. 
Number five, strong debugging and problem solving skills. Most people, when they think about programming or thinking about coding, what they see in their minds is someone just pounding away on a keyboard. But the reality is most of the time, programmers are spent thinking about a problem and trying to find a solution. And that solution gets translated into code. And sometimes your code doesn't work and you have to know the art of debugging. Being able to enhance your problem solving skills, thinking like a programmer, and debugging your code is one of the most important skills you could have as a programmer. Number six, and really this probably should have been number one. Over the past 12 months, we've seen artificial intelligence take over the world by storm. ChatGPT took over the headlines, but beyond that we also have Bard, we have Claude AI, we have Midjourney, we have Stable Diffusion, X formerly known as Twitter now has Grok, and there's a bunch of them out there already. But learning about artificial intelligence and machine learning is a skill that you definitely need. Now there's a couple of ways to work with it. You can be the user of AI, meaning you're using tools like ChatGPT in order to create your code, in order to create your content, in order to ideate some of your ideas. Or maybe you're helping to code AI. Maybe you're learning Python and getting a deep understanding of how to use AI and ML in order to create cutting edge technologies. One area that I definitely see being in high demand over the foreseeable future are developers that know how to work with AI. Now number seven is a big one, and this is advanced database management and optimization. I mean, let's face it, everything we do online, every single app that we use, in some way, shape, or form is working with data, and that data is saved inside of a database. So knowing how to work with SQL, understanding how to work with tables, how to lock tables, how to back up your database, how to query a database for specific data, how to make sure your tables are fully optimized, how to check your tables, how to repair your tables, and knowing how to take those database commands and integrate it with your programming language is a highly sought after skill. I mean, at the end of the day, you wanna make sure you know how to back up your system, back up your database. Cause could you imagine if you lost all your data, what would happen at that point? Well, you'd definitely be out of a job. Now, number eight is something that not everybody thinks about in terms of something they need to know. They think somebody else is gonna take care of this part of it. And it comes down to cybersecurity. It's important, especially nowadays, that people are aware, programmers should be aware how secure the code is. I mean, we hear about database breaches all the time. This website got hacked. This app went down. It all comes down to the security of your code, your understanding of encryption methods, your knowledge of security protocols, and then some very basic things like using multi-factor authentication, having a robust backup strategy, and staying up to date of what's taking place out there. Cybersecurity matters. Number nine, knowledge of distributed systems and how this ties into scalability. Now we spoke earlier about cloud computing and how pretty much every single company has their data in the cloud. But sometimes you're gonna find they also have their information in multiple cloud data centers. Maybe they have some of their information in New York. Maybe they have some more information in California. Their data could be replicated in order to make sure that their content is being delivered in an optimized way to the person visiting their site. Knowing how to use a content delivery network, learning about load balancing, knowing how to use three types of servers, knowing how to use an app server, an asset server, and a database server. Wait a minute, not just one server? No, you could have three of them. Because remember, even though computers are fast, they still have to read and write. And they do it fast, but they cannot do it exactly at the same time. So if you have one server focusing just on the app processing, then you have a second server that's dealing with the images and the videos, and a third server that's working for the database. And knowing how to tie them all in together, now that's next level. Now, number 10, I have to admit is something that I have to work on myself, and that's advanced UI and UX front-end design and development. I mean, I've been using frameworks and libraries forever, but at the end of the day, I'm really a back-end development type of programmer. Give me a Linux server, give me some PHP applications, and I'm having a blast. When it comes to the front-end, that's when I lean on things like Bootstrap. They pretty much have everything I need, but the problem there is that every website tends to look the same. So having advanced front-end development skills is a must, especially if you want to find a way to separate yourself from the rest of the sites that are out there. And then you also should learn about how to use React or how to use Vue, because these front-end technologies are really in high demand. Number 11, knowing about different programming paradigms from procedural programming to object-oriented programming to functional programming. 
knowing how to get a particular task done in each programming paradigm, knowing when is the best time to use each paradigm itself. Because sometimes it just makes sense to go the procedural route. But then when the application gets big, you might want to start using OOP. And if you're a mathematical type of thinker, functional programming might come naturally. But having the ability to jump back and forth to understand a different project, whether it's coded in procedural programming or object-oriented programming or functional programming type code, being able to understand that is going to give you a leg up. And then knowing how to translate from one paradigm to the other is key. And then knowing about design patterns is also helpful. Instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, try to see if there's some solution out there, some structure that can be applied to your problem. All right, so I know I said there's 11, but really there's a bonus tip over here. And that's know about scripting and automation. Now, this is important because think about it. We're all dealing with modules, with packages, with libraries, with frameworks. And there's a lot of overhead for us to deal with. Now, if you want to be a productive coder, if you want to be a productive programmer, you definitely should learn about scripting and automation. And that's where tools like Node.js or some Python automation can really help, or even using bash scripting. I mean, at the end of the day, time is money. And it seems like we have less and less time, especially with all the overhead that we have to worry about. All right, so since we know the job market has been so difficult over the past year, and since we know looking forward is not gonna get easier, these 11 tips and the bonus will give you an unfair advantage. Remember, AI is not coming after your job. Programmers that don't learn how to work with AI, those are the ones that are in trouble. But these skill sets over here, they'll make sure that you're employed for the foreseeable future. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or opinions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.